All right, well, I'll get started while we're waiting for the presentation. Hello, everyone. I'm Jen King, and this is Mara, and we are with the D-Store slash Phil Store team. I've met many of you uh, last year when I was here for the first time at the Web3 Festival. Um, lots of familiar faces and sponsors. Um, thank you, first of all, to FF and ND Labs for putting on this awesome uh, network base. And... Uh, we will get started. So I am the co-founder and CEO of PhilStore, uh, which is uh, has the DStore brand and DStore project, which we're going to talk about today. And then Mara, my co-founder, Chief Hello. Strategy Officer, many of you know. Um, previous life, we were both with Protocol Labs, um, and I managed the client growth portfolio, and Mara managed the, uh, the SP portfolio. So a lot of you are familiar from a storage provider standpoint. Want to say hi? There you go. Okay, yep. Hi, everyone. Glad to see everyone. And again, thanks to ND Labs and Filecoin Foundation for this great opportunity where we get to share what we're doing post-nucleation from Protocol Labs, which we're super excited about. And uh, I'll be talking to you all later this afternoon around 4. Great. Uh, so let's jump into what we do. Um, so DStore is an online marketplace um, for decentralized storage. For those that don't know, does everyone know what DStore means? Decentralized storage. So we have DPIN, DSI, DStore. Uh, and so the mission for DStore is to make Web3 tenable for enterprise and enterprise tenable for Web3. And I'm going to go through both as quickly as possible. I do have a bunch of slides I'm going to go through kind of quickly. Um, I don't think we're going to, we have some time for Q&A at the end, a couple minutes in case anything comes up. Otherwise, you can see us in the back later. Uh, so this is the DStore Network flywheel. And if you'll see on the one side here, we have all of the inputs, which are small, medium businesses, large enterprise, Web3 startups. And they can enter the flywheel, which is dstore.com. And on the other side, we have most of you folks, which are storage providers, service providers, and software uh, solutions, and all of them converge in the center. And so we create all of the demand on this side to satisfy the supply over here. So we're all about driving leads and revenue to this side of the flywheel. So that's what we're going to focus on talking um, about today. How we do it is through product market fit, which is a lot of marketing jargon. I thought I would do two quick things, which is around how do you motivate consumers, first of all, consumers to switch, and it's from an emotional need or you get them on an emotional um, hook. And I have two little quick case studies, and that's where the ducks and taxes came in. Ducks, I don't know, does anyone here know of Dawn Soap? Is it available in this part of the world? It's very popular in North America. They did a whole Procter & Gamble when I worked there many, many, many years ago. They did a commercial innovation, which was creating an emotional connection to it being tough on grease, but soft enough on little baby ducklings that were being rescued from an oil spill. And so what does that actually have to do with product market fit? It turns out everything. It went from being the bottom solution and they couldn't give it away. It was the cheapest. They could never raise the price to the top. And this is in the millions. So $624 million last year alone. So, and that was all in that rating, an emotional connection. Another quick one, taxes, same thing. QuickBooks, you guys know QuickBooks? It's the, like the number one uh, accounting software for small businesses in North America. Sorry, I'm using all North American stuff. I'll do better next time. Uh, but basically how they learned to push people out of the way they always did it, which was taxes, all their receipts in a shoebox, or using uh, spreadsheets, the way they got them to switch to software was by terrifying them, by making it tax compliant, scaring them into thinking that if they didn't use their software, they wouldn't be compliant. So again, emotional connection. So how do you motivate businesses to switch? Very easy, it's through money. And this is one of the challenges that we've had with Falcoin. Um, so how do you uh, motivate them to switch is actually save or make money. We have been trying uh, from Filecoin to approach this from a new product market fit. That was the challenge we took up a year ago when we started. And that was, how do we change the perception of businesses um, from Filecoin or any blockchain storage to being terrifying? And also there was a perception out there that it was free. 
And as we all know, it's not free. I'm sure everyone here knows the businesses you run and the amazing data centers that you have and the services you provide are not free. So the business challenge, as I just said, was uh, enterprise customers, businesses, even some Web3 people that we speak to find the whole concept of terrifying. And the things that we find really, really cool, such as um, the fact that data is sharded. We think that's awesome. That's a benefit. They think that's terrifying because they think their data is just being spread all over the internet with no control. Also, things like corporate entity information with CID labels being exposed, that terrifies them as well. So it all started a year ago. Who here saw Juan speak last year? <laughs> no, just me? Else I know you were there, yes. So Juan uh, took to the stage last year, and that was the first time that we brought out the term D-Store. You can see he's actually wearing a D-Store t-shirt, which was my proud moment, so I had to bring this out. But a year ago was when we launched the concept of D-Store, which was making Filecoin interesting and tenable um, for businesses. So we created the flywheel. DStore.com is where it launched in June. And since then, we had over 1,600 people fill out forms. We had over 363 discovery calls, which is us speaking with actual people for 15 minutes. We've also brought three paid verified deals onto Filecoin, which was a very big challenge for us. And the three use cases I'm gonna talk about really quickly. This one was with Houska. The product market fit that we found here is that they needed the challenge of being racing time to market. So as a commercial innovation, getting to market as fast as possible uh, was looking like a difficult horizon. It was looking like 24 to 18 months for them. By implementing Filecoin, they, did, they saved a year. And then Boxfin was the first one we did. Boxfin was actually with seal storage. The Boxfin case study was really around health records and compliance from a, a privacy and data redundancy. And lastly, the other use case I have is for the DStore Studio side of the house. So when I said earlier that we make enterprise tenable for Web3, what I mean by that is a lot of the businesses and storage providers and service providers that, we've, that we work with really aren't ready to compete in the enterprise market. So uh, Steel Dome came to us. And they said, you know, we're, we're competing, we're in this big, we're in this getting into Web3, but we're really in the corporate Web2 space. We're bridging between the two, and we really need to have a brand that works between both audiences. So we helped them rebrand, created a new website that's completely SEO optimized, created new campaigns, and started driving leads. So this is an example of the D-Store Studio. And I think that's it. Did you want to add anything? Um, I just, I have a question. Yeah. I have a question, um, I, and I really love audience participation, so sorry about that in advance. Um, how many of you are trying to charge for Filecoin services? You want to charge fiat for Filecoin services? Anybody here? No. Um, how many of you have your customers expect Filecoin to be free or even sometimes to be paid to give you the data for Filecoin? Is that... Okay, yeah, that would be perfect. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Mara, when the show, we sent you a hundred dollars SP, my time and she's a hundred dollars. Uh, just show woman SP the co who bought uh, the meal shoe, Tom and Shibu Shi, Yuan Yi, Fu Fei, Gay Woman, uh, SP, Shu Ju, Jiang the Ego Venti, Kono do you, Tom Lai Shu, Hong Kun Hu, Xiang Zhi Dao. Oh, the Daja Ke, you just, uh, Subian Shu, you may just eat a hundred dollars, you may eat a hundred dollars. Yeah, okay. So we need to move away from Filecoin being free. And we need to start charging for those services. And that is exactly what DStore Network is here to help you do, is to start earning fiat cash for the Filecoin services that you're delivering. And so we encourage you to reach out to us, to engage and find out how we can participate together in bringing 
paid deals to you as a storage provider or service provider or software provider uh, in Asia? That, that's all I've got. I think that's it. Thank you.